Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Lux and welcome to another flower photography tutorial. Today I'm here in the kitchen and I'm going to be getting really close up with some gypsophilia. So stick around and I'll see you in just a sec. Gypsophilia then, a really interesting uh, little plant with really small flowers. This is going to be a really interesting shoot because of how small those flowers actually are. I've got uh, a big vase full of them here and you can see exactly how many there are and how small they are. Uh, and it's because of that size that uh, we're going to have a challenge. Usually, uh, say with our clematis, uh, which if you've not seen it already, I'll link it up in the top corner. Um, that was a really interesting shoot because the flower was so large and they have really big petals. We could get down inside that flower with our macro lens and capture the details of individual parts of it. With these, we're going to have to get really, really close, even to just get a single flower at a decent size within the frame. So I'm going to uh, get started um, setting up some lighting. We're going to get lighting arms up inside here um, and we're going to explore these flowers and see what we can get. These flowers are absolutely lovely. They're really, really tiny and they have a very, very strong scent to them. So they're really nice to have around in your house. I'm not actually going to take them out of our little vase here. Um, what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go freehand with the camera and I'm going to use the Adapter Look Studio to get our lighting up close into, uh, into the bouquet and around all of these different stems uh, to move the lighting to exactly where we want it, both in the foreground and in the background. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is bring some lighting in. I've got my Adapter Look Studio control pod sat here on the mini tripod so that I can bring it up nice and high with these adjustable legs that uh, extend out as well so I can lock this into position and have quite a lot of height on there uh, to reach up to the top of our vase. And then obviously we've got the lighting arms as well which then plug into the front of the control pod and I can bring these in to, uh, to position inside uh, this little bouquet of flowers um, and I can bring some around the outside as well so we essentially have one lighting arm uh, lighting our foreground and then one lighting arm lighting our background. Now you can do this both with uh, the coloured lighting arms, you'll see that I've got a blue here right now, um, but we can also use the white lighting arms with colour filters. So I've got a good selection of of colour filters here ready to go um, and the name of the game is simply to experiment with these little white flowers. Adding a little bit of colour if you're feeling creative or just using the white lighting arms and maybe some diffusers if you want to get a nice representative shots of this big cluster of white and green. The first thing that I've been trying is to get a, a shot of a single one of these flowers. Now they're really, really small. They maybe take up a sixth of the frame, if that. Um, so our background is really, really important. What I've done here is add some coloured lights to the background, which gives us some really nice out of focus bokeh effects on the rest of the flowers behind the one that we're shooting. The use of colours and the choice of those colours is entirely up to you. It's down to your preference and creativity. I've used uh, green and blue, I think it gives it quite uh, an underwatery look, if not particularly realistic, but it's really interesting to get that separation between the white flower and the colourful background. Uh, without that, that 
the main flower is going to blend in with all of the other white flowers behind it um, and it's not going to stand out and catch the eye. Next, I'm going to try and find a few flowers in a similar position so I can get a little bunch of flowers and then think about the background in a similar way, maybe using some colour filters. I'm having a lot of fun uh, playing around with these flowers, moving my lighting around and finding different interesting compositions. And there are so many compositions when you've got something quite as uh, complex and, and detailed as these little uh, branches are. Um, you can go exploring for little, little individual clumps of flowers, um, grab a shot from the front, but you also need to think about your background at the same time, especially when it comes to your lighting. If you want your backgrounds to be quite uh, colourful and light, you need to put a, quite a lot of light into that background uh, on these white flowers. If, you, uh, if you're shooting straight through and you only have uh, you know, a couple of stalks and maybe a couple of flowers in there, the background ends up quite dark. So you need to make sure to expose and light your foreground with your background in mind. If you're wanting uh, more light in your background, you're going to have to put less light on your foreground and then expose for that so that the background then becomes brighter. Obviously you can add more lights and change the brightnesses of all of these lights uh, individually as well and that really is the joy of continuous lighting like this. You can see exactly what you're doing as you're building your scene, as you're moving your lighting around. There's no guesswork uh, like there would be for uh, say using some flash guns um, and, and placing those around, you know exactly what balance of light is going to happen because you can see it with your own eyes. The colours that I've been using have varied, but I really enjoy using this pink colour filter on a white lighting art. It creates this nice summery feel in the background of your shot and, and really complements the white flowers. Obviously using different colours and different colour filters is entirely down to you and your preferences and what kind of uh, feel and style of image you want to come out with at the end. But I do recommend changing your colour filters around and experimenting with all of these different colours and options available. Uh, you don't know what things are going to turn out like until you try it. So with that said, I'm going to uh, try a few more different angles on these flowers, uh, move around just a little bit more and uh, let's see what we can come up with. I've had a lot of fun exploring and shooting these little flowers and they are really really little, they're very very small and they're so numerous as well. I've got lots of shots of all sorts of different angles with different things in the background. No two shots have been the same simply because me moving just a couple of centimetres has changed the composition of the shot entirely because the background has changed as well. Playing around with the colours and the lighting has been really fun as well. Adding in different colour filters and different coloured lighting arms brought entirely different uh, feels and vibes to these shots. Uh, from underwatery looking landscapes to uh, nice bright pinks and yellows and oranges. That's not to say it hasn't been without its difficulties though. Getting in as close as we need to to get these tiny little flowers means that our depth of field is really really shallow as it is with most macro. But that means we can really only get a single flower and usually not even an entire single flower in focus at once. Shooting on a narrow aperture really helps with that but uh, getting the lighting into the places that you want can be really tricky unless you've got something uh, flexible uh, like our lighting arms. Uh, with the lighting arms I found it really easy to bring all of our light in underneath and around the back of some of our flowers so that the light is actually shining through the petals similar to how we did with our clematis. 
Now I've had a lot of fun shooting these flowers, but let me know what you think today's shoot and the results that I've got and whether or not you'd do something differently. Put it down in the comments under the video and while you're there, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you want to see more flower photography and macro photography tutorials in the future, make sure to subscribe so we know to make some more. If you've got some suggestions on what kinds of flowers and other subjects you'd like to see me shoot in the future, make sure to put that in the comments as well. Until then though guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.